Listen carefully. Because I'm speaking to you five days after the great feast of Pentecost. But still, what I'm going to say is so relevant to you because I don't want you to just come for prayer meetings with a bag so that Jesus solves your problems and you go back with that bag. Solving the problem is only a means by which you come closer to him. Okay? I just was counseling a lady the other day. And she said, brother, I'm so close to the Lord. I come for prayer meetings, etc. And I said, you're fooling yourself. You don't know, brother, I go for retreats, I go for prayer meetings. The lady is a marriage where there is no child, childless couple. She came to the Lord because of that. I told her, I said, you're fooling yourself. You don't love the Lord. It's not that the Lord you want to see, you want to see the child. So it is with many. And I say to you, and don't feel offended because I say it to you. Many of us want to see the job that we want the Lord to give us. We don't want to see the Lord. We are fooling ourselves thinking that we want to see the Lord. We are coming to the Lord only in order to get the job through Him. Or someone wants a house to be constructed. They want to see the house. See? You may say by mouth, I want to see you Lord, I want to touch you, I want an intimate relationship. Come on, don't fool yourself. You don't want an intimate relationship with the Lord. You want to see your house. You want an intimate relationship with your house, with your business, with your job, with the child or someone who wants marriage. I want to see my spouse coming. The first thing that God appreciates is that we are sincere and frank. Because if you are really interested in seeing the Lord and intimacy with the Lord, your life will change forever. It will come to a point where you will say, Lord, you give it or you don't give it, I want you. It happened to the Samaritan woman. She came only interested in water to the well. She was only interested in filling her pot. When Jesus spoke to her and Jesus said, I can give you water. She said, please give me that water because she was only interested in water, in filling the pot. But as a result of talking to Jesus at a particular point, she, forget, she forgot her part there and she went out to tell others about Jesus. That is the point at which she became intimate with the Lord. Till then she was looking at the Lord for water. So don't fool yourself. Because many years we may be in the prayer group, but we may not realize this. That actually I am not interested in Jesus so much, but I am interested in solving my problem. My wife is not giving me peace at home. My husband is not giving me peace at home. There is no peace at home. All the time problems. So I am there for retreats. I am there for everything. I want to see Jesus, brother. I am really, I really want to be intimate. Don't fool yourself. You want to see peace at home. For if you really want to see Jesus, you will reach the point of saying, Lord, you give or you don't give, it doesn't matter. But I don't want to lose you now. I realize now that you use that problem in order like a fishing line to hook me and to bring me to you. I realize now, Lord, you are using that problem in order to hook me and to bring me. So therefore, begin with that and examine yourself. No? Even it does not matter whether you are there in the prayer group for years, and you are leading a very holy life, avoiding sin and dedicating yourself to prayer, still you have need of intimacy with Jesus. For the Bible says Job also was avoiding all occasions of sin and Job used to intercede for others and Job was very good in God's sight. But still, though he was good in God's sight, avoiding sin, still he lacked one thing, intimacy with God. And so the Lord had to allow problems in his life. The children died, business was taken away, sickness came into him, 
And finally he sat there and he started grumbling and complaining, saying, Lord, I'm doing so much for you. And why is all this? And that is the time the Lord started speaking to him. 42 chapters the Lord spoke to him and showed him, see Job, in chapter number one, you were very faithful to me, avoiding sin, praying for others, doing all the right things, but you did not know me. You did not know me intimately. Our case may be like that. We may be praying, going for mass, doing all sorts of things, doing intercession, avoiding sin. Even I dare to say, right, reading the Bible, but all of us, including me, require to come more and more and more and more and more and more intimate to the Lord. And then at a particular point you will realize that problems are sent in a way to give us one one blow so that we come to the Lord. And Job in the last chapter he says, Lord, please forgive me. I was saying, why are you sending this? Why are you sending this? Forgive me, Lord. For now I have realized why you have sent it. I spoke all sorts of nonsense against you. We may not say it publicly, but within ourselves. Lord, why are you doing this? Lord, I don't understand you. Job was like that. And Job said, Lord, I've spoken this. But now I, I say sorry. I am speaking nonsense. Now I know the cause why you sent it. So that I can see you better now. Till today I had heard other brothers and preachers talking about you. But now I can see you. I can have a face-to-face -face relationship with you. Job chapter 42. Job chapter 42 and verse number 2. Job is talking to the Lord. Chapter 42 and verse number 2. Now Lord, that you are all powerful and you can do everything you want. Verse number 3. You ask how I dare question your wisdom. When I am so ignorant, I talked about things I did not understand, about marvels too great for me to know. Next verse, verse number four. You told me to listen while you spoke and to try to answer your questions. Verse number five. In the past, I knew only what others had told me. But now... But now I have seen you with my own eyes. Which means that even this holy man who was doing all good things had need of intimacy. He had to see the Lord. I congratulate you if you are a holy person coming regularly for the prayer meeting, doing Bible reading and going for mass and doing etc, etc, etc. You are in the shoes of Job. But still you, we, you and I lack one thing. Coming nearer to God, seeing him with eyes. That is why the Lord allows, you know, as it were, blows in our life. Because slowly after some time we start taking it for granted. We go for mass, why? We have to get up and go for mass, so we go. We come for Thursday prayer meetings, why? We know we have to do it. Religion for us becomes something we have just memorized and we do it. Just as we eat food and we have tea and we have breakfast, because we have to do it. So the Lord says that these people started well, they wanted to know me. They came to me because of some problem, but slowly now their desire for me has dried up. Now they are only doing the outward things. Isaiah chapter 29 and verse number 13. These people claim to worship me, but their words are meaningless. Their hearts are somewhere else. Their religion is nothing but human rules and traditions which they have simply memorized. Look at the first sentence. They claim to worship me, but their hearts are somewhere else. It is only when you have given your heart to the Lord. Often we do this only after blow after blow, problem after problem. It is only then we get into an intimate relationship with the Lord. It doesn't matter at that stage whether what we came for to the Lord is given to us or not. One of the people who used to come in the other prayer meeting to me, an elderly man, he came because first because he has problem with his grown-up children. Poor man, he would phone me every two days. Problems after problems, his children were so unfair to him. 
But over a period of six years, the Lord used suffering in his life in order to make him realize who he was. And that's what I'm telling you too. You will face all sorts of obstacles in your life. And every obstacle is for you to know who Jesus Christ really is. Innumerable and insurmountable obstacles will come in your life again and again. In order to, for you to realize who really Jesus Christ is. And what he is to you. As in the case of Job. Otherwise you remain like this. They worship me, their words are meaningless, their hearts are somewhere else. Their religion is nothing but human rules and traditions which they are simply memorized. And the next line the Lord says. The next line, verse number 14. So I will startle them with one unexpected blow after another. Look at that. He says, I will allow blows in their life. But they come searching for me. I want you to understand this because great number of people sometimes are in depression out there going for mass I'm doing this I'm doing that why is God not answering maybe you're in the part of the prayer group also and you have these questions in your mind but you're not brave enough in order to open your mouth and say it like Job was now well know the answer the Lord is saying I'm allowing it so that they come searching for me alone I said to the lady I said, don't fool yourself. You're not searching for Christ. You're searching for a baby, a child. And so it is, the Holy Spirit will show you today, wherever you're sitting, he will speak to you and tell you, very often, you're not searching for Christ. You're searching only for your business to be blessed or because profits remain high or so that everything goes well with you. Don't fool yourself. In the, in the prophet Hosea chapter 5 and verse number 15, you find recorded like this. I will abandon my people until they have suffered enough for their sins and come looking for me. Look at that. Abandon is a very strong word. I will let go of them. Nkonkari sorundi dolodanga. Don't we feel it sometimes? We feel as though they could do Allah. God is blind. Why is he allowing this? Particularly some of us who are like Job, who are doing everything right. Well, now know from the Bible. The intimacy you had with the Lord has become a stagnant intimacy. He wants you to come even closer to seek him. Until they have suffered enough for their sins and come looking for me. Last sentence. Perhaps in their suffering they will try to find me. Tell this to the people in your family. Tell them to your friends and relatives who say, Why problems? Why problems? Tell them this. Tell this to yourself. When you find yourself in suffering. Perhaps in this suffering I will try searching for the Lord alone. Not searching for what the Lord can give me. As I said to the lady, as I say to many of us, don't fool yourself. You're not searching for the Lord. You're searching for what you want from the Lord. In Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse number 30, you read like this. When you are in trouble and all those things happen to you, you will finally turn to the Lord and obey him. When you're in trouble and things happen like this to you, you will finally turn to me. Verse number 31 says, He's a merciful God. He will not abandon you. See, he uses the same word. But this time he says, I will not abandon you. Or destroy you. I will not forget the covenant he himself made with your ancestors. In the first he said, I will abandon you because you're not searching for me. You're searching for only what I can give you. But now when you reach the point that you're searching for me and looking for me alone, I will not abandon you. You will realize that I'm a reliable God. You will realize what I told St. Faustina. 
Jesus, I trust in you. You can trust in me. At that point, you will realize how I work in the life of a person. You understand? Many people, therefore, though they are good people, I am not here to condemn anyone because I see it sometimes there's stagnancy coming in me also. Thanks be to God, the Bible is there to remind me why problems are coming. It is like a rope. Problems and sufferings are like a rope to put to the pot which you put into the well. Once the pot is full, you pull it up with the rope. You and I are a pot. The one who is pulling us is God and the rope is the problems or sufferings. So the rope, the problems and sufferings are the means by which he brings you closer to him. Unfortunately, there are some people who only don't want to know the ways of God. They don't want to know him. Once you know Jesus, you come to know his ways. Jesus said, you know what is eternal life? Eternal life is knowing me, knowing my ways. John chapter 17 and verse number 3. Eternal life is knowing God and knowing me, Jesus said. So knowing how I operate, knowing my ways, eternal life means to know you, the only true God, and to know Jesus Christ whom you sent. This is the reason we are called to eternal life. Eternal life, therefore, if you know Jesus and his ways, starts now, not after you are in the coffin. It starts now. Many people who say to me, please pray, brother, for eternal rest to so-and-so who has died. I promise to pray and I do pray, but I wonder, have they understood the meaning of what is eternal rest? Well, Jesus explained it. He says, eternal rest means it starts here while you're living. It's nothing that you postpone afterwards. Because when you postpone afterwards, then you have to rely on the prayers of others as you burn in purgatory. Or worse, in hell. But it starts here, the relationship starts here. You know me, you know how I operate in your life. Therefore, even when bad things happen or when good things happen, you understand how the Lord is working in your life. For that is how an intimate relationship is, isn't it? Otherwise, why call it intimate? Means I don't know him. Why does a husband or wife say, I know him pakka, I know my husband pakka. What's the meaning of that? She knows him inside out. She knows his ways. She knows how he'll operate, how he'll think, what he'll do at a particular time, what he'll choose not to do. She knows him intimately. Once you come to know Jesus, you come to know him intimately. You know his ways. And Moses, Moses was a great friend of God. He said, God, I want to know your ways. I don't want to see your power. People who come to God only for solution of problems want to see God's power. When I say I want to come, Lord, please, please, please give me that marriage partner, give me that job, give me that peace. I want to see his power. Don't fool yourself. You're not interested in God. You're not looking at it for him. You're looking for him for your purpose. So you're fooling yourself. That's why often suffering continues. You understand? Blow after blow continues until you come. To the realization what God is trying to say to you. Moses was very clear. He said, Lord, I don't want to see your power. Show me your ways. Psalm 103 and verse number 7. Psalm 103 and verse number 7 says, God made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the people of Israel. He knew the people only wanted miracles. When they had no water, they wanted water. When they had no food, they wanted food. And when God sometimes did not give something to them, they would start grumbling. Have we become such Christians? Sometimes I wonder. But not Moses. Moses said, show me your ways. 
And the Lord granted according to what you asked for. He showed Moses his ways. But to the rest of the people he showed only his acts. Be like Moses. No wonder Moses was called a friend of God. Exodus 33 and verse number 11 says. Exodus 33 and verse number 11 says. Moses would speak to Moses. The Lord would speak with Moses face to face. As someone speaks with a friend. There it is. God wants to call you into this kind of relationship where he speaks to you friend to friend. In modern gospel language we call this revelation. Where God reveals himself. He speaks through Jesus Christ to you. He speaks not once in a way. Every day he speaks to you. He reveals himself. And you seek revelation of God, not to know, Lord, when should I start my business? Or when should I take the next step in this? Not that. That's a fortune teller. Not for that purpose. But I want to know you, Lord. Without any gain to me, I want to know you, Lord. That's what Moses did. That's why he was a friend. And Jesus in John 14 and 21 said, I will reveal myself to those who love me. I will reveal myself to those who love me. I will come and show myself face to face. So the whole aim of why Jesus came to this earth was that not only brother Edmund or some priest has a face to face relationship, but everyone, everyone should be led into this. A face to face encounter with the Lord. Those who accept my commandments and obey them are the ones who love me. My father will love those who love me. Look at the last line. I too will love them and reveal myself to them. It's a promise. I will reveal. Please see, he never said I may reveal. No doubt about it, I will reveal. Revelation is a matter of course for a person who seeks only Christ. But often we human beings we settle down somewhere, we begin well, but we settle down somewhere. We become like the Christians of Isaiah 29, 13. Religion becomes mechanical, our words also become mechanical, our heart is somewhere else. So blow after blow has to come. I want to simultaneously explain to you, in a way, the necessity of suffering. Why that rope has to be there which will pull the pot to the potter. God is using sadness and suffering to bring us, to bring about a change in heart, this heart which is so selfish. Oh, this heart is so selfish. It says a lot of things. It says, I love you, Jesus, I'll do anything, but this heart only wants only what Jesus can give. I tell you the plain fact today. The closer you come to Jesus, you realize what kind of a person you are. And in that you see what kind of a person Jesus is. Despite all that you are. You come to know his ways. 